Dr. Hanna, uh, what's your feeling about uh, cardioversion and uh, nodal ablation? A cardioversion, you know, I think that if you have somebody with paroxysmal, paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, um, everybody, you know, gets a chance at trying to achieve sinus rhythm. Um, you know, I think that some patients with cardiac amyloidosis, no matter what you do, we, you can't just keep them in rhythm. Uh, you're get, getting cardioverted every couple weeks. Um, the one thing I would say about cardioversion, there was a publication showing increased risk of um, thromboembolism. Um, and, the, and the fact is that even in sinus rhythm, patients can, who have a lot of amyloid filtration in their atria can have such poor atrial function that, for example, on mitral inflow, you barely see even an A-wave. You can, there's been documented that you can have um, atrial thrombus in normal sinus rhythm, or, in, or for example, when they're in AFib and you have them adequately anticoagulated for a period of, of months, well above what you would consider needed, that you would, wouldn't need a TE anymore. We're now recommending that patients get TE, even if they're adequately anticoagulated, because there's a percentage will still have persistent atrial thrombus. It's just, you know, the CHADS VAS score, the CHAD score does not account for the very high risk of atrial thromboembolism that you see in cardiac amyloidosis. Um, as far as, uh, did you say ablation? Yeah. Yeah. So as far as ablation, um, atrial fibrillation, we actually looked at this at our institution at atrial fibrillation ablation. The, the, the kind of the consensus before we started doing that was, look, it's going to, the likelihood of this being successful is very low. There's a lot of amyloid, there's a lot of scarring. And so we're going to be putting people through a procedure that's likely not going to work. And uh, one of our EP fellows actually looked at um, our patients who underwent atrial fibrillation and then propensity, propensity mass in three to one with, with propensity mass patients who, with AFib who did not get atrial fibrillation and actually showed that they had significant reduction in atrial fibrillation burden and actually a mortality benefit. Now, that's a very hypothesis generating uh, publication study, but I, I think in my Typical elderly patients had long-standing AFib, and you know they're very advanced. I don't, I don't feel that in general I wouldn't pursue an atrial fibrillation ablation. Um, I think if somebody who has paroxysmal AFib or um, and really doesn't tolerate AFib well, I think it's not completely unreasonable to consider an atrial fibrillation or pulmonary vein isolation. 